Thank you all for having us. Uh, like I said, I'm Matthew, this is Lorenzo. We both work at the Sprint Store uh, over on Flatiron. Um, so, if you have any help, that's where you can come find us. Um, but yeah, we were asked to come here and specifically talk about um, the differences between Android and iPhone. Uh, being new to it, it can be um, uh, a little bit hard to understand, but that's what we're here for. So, um, we're going to go through and kind of go through some generic. Sorry about your mic. Uh, go through some generic um, differences, and then um, at the end we'll have an opportunity to ask questions. So if you guys have any questions specifically uh, about WhatsApp and that kind of stuff, we can definitely answer that as well. Um, so first and foremost, uh, we're just going to start with Apple first. Um, so this kind of works out really well because I have an iPhone, um, Lorenzo has a Samsung phone, which is an Android phone. Um, we both um, sell both, so um, we're pretty knowledgeable on them. I don't know if this is easy to see with the lights being on, but if you turn the lights off, it's very dark. So I'm just going to go through the bullet points. And so specifically, the differences. So with Apple, um, the biggest thing, one of the biggest selling points for Apple is they're like the secure iOS. Um, OS is an operating system. Operating system basically just means how you operate the device. So if you're used to like a computer, um, you have like a Windows operating system on it, like a, a PC, in comparison to like a MacBook, which would have a, a Mac OS. Um, so you're going to say OS a couple times, but it just means operating system, how you operate the phone. Um, secure OS meaning um, Apple uh, controls and uh, builds everything themselves as far as they create the hardware for the device, they create the software for the device, and now they create services for you, so it's like a closed loop with them. Because of that, it's very hard to get viruses on them. Um, I don't know if you have MacBooks, but with MacBooks, um, you rarely have to buy an antivirus, if at all, <coughs> uh, in comparison to like a Windows computer, which you want to have antivirus just to be safe. Um, similar with the phones, um, Apple devices, iPads, um, don't really need an antivirus. Um, because Apple controls everything that goes on there, to download anything, um, you'll need applications. So you've heard like, you know, there's an app for that, or all the App Store. Um, what that is, is basically software for your phone that you can download. Apple decides and okays every type of um, app that is out there available. If someone wants to create an application for you to use, they have to go through Apple's um, process to make sure that it works and it's secure. So that's what we mean by secure iOS. Uh, as far as some, uh, some um, yeah, simplistic iOS, um, but basically just meaning, in my experience, um, people who are new to smartphones tend to be able to understand an Apple operating system a little bit, it depends, they're a bit, a little bit different. But Apple keeps everything pretty simple as far as where you find your applications. Um, I can kind of actually demo that a little bit. So I'm actually using my iPad right now to, uh, we created the PowerPoint on my iPad and now I have it plugged up to a cable that's plugged up to the projector. So, but you can like see, I have everything organized in folders and all those little icons are applications that do different things. So that's what I mean by simplistic. Um, Android has a little bit more options available to you, um, which Lorenzo will go into. Um, as far as compatibility with other Apple devices, so I am able to, if I wanted to, I could pull up the same presentation on my iPhone. Um, if you've ever heard of people say that with Apple, you have like an ecosystem that's created with Apple, again, because Apple creates the software, the hardware, everything. Um, my Mac computer, my iPad, an Apple Watch, all that works very seamlessly together. If I take a picture on my iPhone, I can use it on my iPad. Um, everything's connected because Apple has that secure network. Um, oh, um, so other thing with Apple, and this is a little bit too sprint, so I apologize for that. But um, with Apple, you have um, more. You have Apple stores you can go to. You know, here in the city, we have several Apple locations you can actually go to. Um, they they provide a service called Apple Care. Uh, provides a service called Sprint Complete. Basically, it's tech support, it's hardware stuff, um, damages, all that kind of stuff. And the difference with Android is you don't actually physically have a lot of Google locations um, for exactly you do. Uh, large, large variety of devices. So we just put on two standard kind of middle mid range devices here. Um, iPhone 8 and the iPhone XR, which the X stands for 10, it's the Roman numeral for 10. So 
It's actually the 10R, it's a 10 year anniversary two years ago, and this is the one that came out after that. Um, both are um, mid range phones, um, but the difference is now with the new 10Rs, 10Ss, the new ones that just got announced the other day, the iPhone 11, is that uh, they're kind of getting away from the button and they're going to a full screen display. They use spatial recognition now, if you've heard anything about that. They use that to unlock your phone rather than using a fingerprint. Um, but the starting right now, the lower end is about the iPhone 8. There's an iPhone 7 also, but they're kind of getting away from that as we're moving forward to the iPhone 11. Um, as far as more accessory options, basically, usually iPhone does tend to be a little more popular as far as us selling at Sprint. I do sell more iPhones. Um, because of that, there is more of a more options for accessories, more case options, more um, headphones, um, all kinds of different things. Like this adapter you got plugged up to your projector is an option that you can get. So um, yeah, so those are some of the main main features. There's much more we can dig into if we have questions, but that's just some of the basic um, points of an iPhone or an Android or an Apple operating system. Cool. Hey, what's up, guys? How's everyone doing? What's up? What's up? Any voices? Come on. Hey. Hey. What's up? <laughs> As you guys know, I'm Lorenzo from Sprint. Um, I'm going to be talking to you guys about, you know, Android. Uh, so one of the biggest differences between Android and iPhone is that, like, let's say you wanted a theme that has, like, The Simpsons. I, like everything on your on your screen is like Simpsons theme. You can customize your phone to look exactly like that. Or let's say you like dogs, you can make every icon on your phone tiny dogs. <laughs> like you can customize it like crazy. Yep. Um, so another another really good option. I mean it's a plus, but I guess a negative too. Uh, you can also like remote access the phone. So let's say you have like a problem with your phone. Uh, we would actually be able to like remotely access your phone and you know run diagnostics on it, see what's wrong, so that you wouldn't have to like physically go to a store and you know walk there. <laughs> you could just stay at the comfort of your own house and just you know, hey, what's wrong with my phone? They'd be able to look at it. Um, Oh, yeah. So the thing with Android operating system is a uh, is a whole bunch of different carriers for it, or not carriers, but brands. So you have like Google, Samsung, LG. You have manufacturers. You have Google, Samsung, LG. Uh, so you have a wider variety of devices. So let's say you know you don't like LG, but you like Samsung, but you still like the Android operating system. You'll you'll still get it on the Samsung phone. Oh yeah, so Android usually uh, they run a bit more cost efficient. So if you look at like Apple phones, you'd be looking at around four to five hundred dollars. It depends on what phone you want to get. But Android phones they could be as little as like a hundred dollars or even two hundred dollars. Um, and here we have like a few examples of some of uh, Android phones like the Google Three A that just came out. The A50, which has a really, really nice camera, and the LG Stylo 5, which is kind of like a Note, but like LG's take on it, because it has a stylus. Yeah. <laughs> right. um, one thing I would mention about the third-party compatibility. Um, so in comparison to the Apple, where I was saying you have um, you have all the apps that are available to you have to be okayed by Apple before you can download them. They're all only on the App Store. Uh, with the Android operating system, in, in similar similar <coughs> to a Windows computer, it's open source, meaning if I wanted to create an application to put out there for people, I could and easily disperse it to everybody. Um, that's both a plus and a negative. Plus is that you have opportunities to download apps that might not um, get the funding to be okay by Apple. On the downside is there's more risk involved with that because if I make an app that I say is a flashlight app, which if anybody ever tries to download a flashlight app, <laughs> yeah, you don't. don't, need that. You don't need that. Um, <laughs> all the phones come with a flashlight built-in application. The flashlight app that you download most of the times is malware, meaning it's going to be lots of pop-ups and advertisements on your phone. Um, or, or, 
or anything that says like virus cleaner or anything like that, phone right. cleaner, don't download them. Right. I mean, there, there are there are antiviruses you can download, but um, you want to go through known manufacturers for software. So like, you know, we've heard of you know, Norton or Kaspersky, same kind of software that we have on a computer, they now make Android applications that do the same thing. They check your phone for viruses, they make sure that when you're on a website it's secure, you know, your big information is secure if you're purchasing things online. Um, so yeah, so I just wanted to make sure that the big thing with the third party is good and bad. You just have to be aware of what you're downloading. Um, my recommendation is usually always go through uh, what they call the Play Store, which is where all their apps are located, where you can go there, you can read reviews, um, you can see all that information before you download it. Um, um, so yeah, so that's that's kind of the biggest difference. So like I said, with Apple, everything's kind of controlled by Apple, which is good and bad again, secure, but you know maybe there's some apps that don't ever make it through because Apple didn't accept it. Um, hope that makes sense. Of course, if you have any questions, let me know. Um, that's mostly it for like the biggest differences. It definitely goes more into detail. Um, but yeah, I mean with Android, again like Windows. So if it's easy for your, like if a lot of us have had computers way longer than we've had phones, cell phones, especially smartphones. Um, think of Android as like a Windows computer. You have a bunch of, you have HP, you have Dell, you have all these different companies, manufacturers that sell computers that work, work with the Windows operating system. Um, with Mac and Apple, it's always only been made by Mac. So um, it's very, very similar computers with the phones. Um, it's just now instead of Windows, it's Android. And Android is um, created and maintained by Google. Google is a company that created Android operating system. So, question? They paid for it, they didn't really create it. Fair enough, they, they yeah. financed it. Yeah, that's fair, that's fair. But they are, the, the, as far as who's in charge of the Android operating system, it is more Google than Samsung or LG. Samsung and LG just make the phones, um, Google makes the software that goes on the phone. Um, so that's why uh, all those devices, even though they're different manufacturers and have different features, the operating system is very similar because they're all Android operating system. Um, cool. I was working to the Samsung building, and they have virtual reality, and you can have virtual reality things. Yeah. Yeah. They sell. They sell like um, I think they call it augmented reality AR, and it's basically yeah, it's basically now you can like wear a headset. Um, and it puts you within like a 3D space where you feel like you're actually there. Um, and that's yeah, something that Samsung's working on. Apple hasn't really seen anything like that yet. So that's another, so that's kind of some things. Usually, uh, I feel like Android is a little bit quicker with some features. They're not afraid to put features out to try. Um, this is kind of going a little much, but like, you know, LG has a feature where now it scans your palm instead of your face or your fingerprint. Um, you actually scan your palm, you can control things with air motions. Um, things that can be seen a little bit as gimmicky or that are really, really new, um, whereas Apple usually waits until they test it before they have those features. Right. Oh. 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 I think you're next. Oh. Okay. Yeah. Sorry. So, to be scan your palm, could you like Xerox your hand, <laughs> you chop off someone's hand, you put it down there, or you, you don't want to carry a right arm. You zero out the uh, the palm and it put it with it. I technically, I think it won. Um, <laughs> that's that's kind of the plus, or what Apple is saying is their plus to having facial recognition. The retina, retina. Well, right, the retina, and Samsung. The blood vessels in the retina. Right, and Samsung's had retina for a while. Um, um, but Apple, their new facial recognition, and they switched from a fingerprint scanner to facial recognition because they say it's more secure. It's actually 3D mapping your face, and um, people can't do it when you're asleep. You have to actually be looking at the phone. So like, I have facial recognition on my phone. If I pulled it out and I, and I didn't look at it, it wouldn't unlock. But the moment I look at it and it sees me look at it, it unlocks, um, which is cool and kind of scary. But it's still kind of cool and fast and helpful. But uh, one thing to add, though, like, if you're if you're like uh, nervous about like law enforcement or anything like getting access to that data, they there was recently a few cases where they tried to like access someone's like facial features to see who was shoplifting at an Apple store, but yeah. they wouldn't give the police the information because they use the face ID like 
all of the phones? It's like, oh, yeah. I mean, Apple has yeah. always been, this kind of goes back to everything I've been saying, Apple's really known for security for the most part. I know that they've been hacked. Um, everybody has in some way at this point. But um, that is one thing that they preach the most is their security. So. Um, I know you two both have questions. Yeah, uh, did you prefer battery life? Uh, yes, yes, but it's kind of hard because, um, first off, there's new models all the time, right? They just announced on, on uh, a couple of days ago, the 11, all the new iPhone models, and they're better. Um, they're saying that all they really compare them to is previous models. So, like, if I go back to the 10R that was on the last screen, their new 11 is supposed to be a five hours better. Um, really though, it comes down to what you're using and how you use the phone. Um, if you're mostly using it for talk, text, checking the web, most, almost every device from phone will be fine throughout the whole day. Um, the thing with batteries that you have to rem remember, and this has been a thing since batteries have been around, is the more you charge them, over time, they start to hold less charge. Um, uh, Apple does have a feature, if I go into my settings, I can go to my battery status and it tells me how much of my battery um, life is left. Basically, like I've had my phone for almost two years and it tells me it's like 87% of what it used to be. So it's, I do realize my phone doesn't hold a charge as much as it used to. Um, as far as battery is concerned, there's the whole story of you don't want to leave it charging all night. Mm -hmm. It's kind of hard not to. I do it all the time. I go to bed, I want to make sure my phone's charged when I wake up, so I definitely plug it up. It's charged in a couple hours. It's on the charger for much longer than that because I'm sleeping. Um, so it's something that is there. It's kind of, you know, it's kind of hard to tell. And that didn't really totally answer your question, but I mean with Android, it varies completely because Android has a wider range of devices. Like, like Lorenzo was saying, you have a device that's only $200 in comparison to like the new Samsung Note 10 that just came out, and that's, you know, $1,100. Yeah. So the Apple has a much bigger battery, usually physical size of the battery is taken into effect, and then also, um, like, the, the, the display. If it's a really high resolution display, it's going to pull on the battery more. Um, so they're both trying to do things on both sides to kind of help with battery efficiency. Um, the big thing that Apple came out with in the last update on their software was the battery status, and you can do like um, you can see how much your battery is being mostly used on. It tells you which applications are using it the most. With Samsung, they do um, they have their new battery is also get their smart battery, where it learns what you're using it on most of the time, and then it helps you um, redirect the battery to the things that you need it on, and not pull it when you don't need it. So they're both working on it. Um, in different ways, um, but it really just depends. Um, I've heard Apple's going to sell uh, supplies to third parties, you know, finally. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. That's what I heard. Yeah, they, maybe. I know. Again, they're trying. They're very big, and they have always been big about keeping everything within their realm, so they have full control over everything, which is again good and bad. Um, I haven't heard too much about that. I just, I, I, if anybody has questions about the launch of the new phone, I definitely watch that and I can talk about that more. But as far as like some of that stuff, it's a little bit above my. <laughs> so, what so, so 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 supplies are you mean? Like, like batteries and stuff like that. I mean, you know. So, right now, actually, like, uh, I mean, sorry. Uh, Sprint, we, uh, we, would, we have some stores that have like repair, repair centers in them. And just recently, we were cleared to do like repairs on Apple devices. So the thing with Apple is that you know you're getting, like if you do a repair at one of our stores, you know you're getting an official like Apple screen because like they keep track of all of their screens, like specific serial numbers for the specific phones. Up down to the screw. Like yep. The screw has a serial number on it, so they know it's all Apple. Right? And you put in the wrong screw, your phone's going to be like, up. Oh, they do use other manufacturers, like there's a big thing with like the 10R in comparison to the 10S, which is last year's models. The 10R actually uses an LG screen. Do you trust with third party batteries? Uh, no. Not in my iPhone. I mean, yeah. um, some Android phones, you can put. Uh, it's less and less easy, it's, it's harder and harder to change your battery. They're all, now they're all built in. There was a time when you pop the back off and you can order the battery from Amazon and you'd be fine. Um, that's not easy to do anymore, even just to get two of the batteries hard. So I would, as sometimes yes, it costs more money, but I would usually recommend sticking with 
the manufacturer. If you have a Samsung phone, get a Samsung battery. If you have an LG phone, get an LG battery. Um, it was built to work with that. It usually will tend to last longer. It can a good analogy would be like, you wouldn't normally be able to do a repair on your own on like a car that, a 2018 new car, but a car from like 1985, of course you can, like, you can take that thing apart and then That's rebuild it yourself. Thing, right? But now, now it is like, there's so many computers inside your cars that it's like, I'm just gonna take it to the dealer. <laughs> uh, one sec, I think I want to, did you just have a question? It's a bit bears on, on what do you, what do you guys think of uh, the right to repair? Uh, you mentioned how many computers are in. By the way, ten years ago there were five computers under the hood of uh, Ford, <coughs> uh, and they had to create a, 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 a standard port, which is underneath. You probably know about it. There's an app for your phone to uh, access the standard port. Yes, uh, Sprint, I'm not trying to sell, but just so you know, uh, Sprint does sell a device called the Sprint Drive, which is a device that plugs up to that port, right. and it gives you um, maintenance on your car, gives you mileage, it tracks your device, and now you know it has um, huh? um, yeah, They don't advise the average customer to use it that way, but you can actually reprogram the under the computer. Oh, yeah, no, I'm sure. I'm, I'm sure there's ways. <laughs> on all the devices. Whether or not, I mean, how hard it is and whether or not it's going to give you the performance you want is the question, I guess. Um, but yeah, I mean, I feel like uh, it's, it's preference. You do what you, you can, if you want to buy the battery somewhere else, if you want to go through a third party, you can. That does void your warranty a lot of time. And um, there's other options if you want to do that. Have you, have you got any ideas or opinions regarding the difference between, as you say, close dealer support versus uh, um, general, you know, like your outside repair band support. Uh, Honestly, you're, you're better off going to like an official certified, certified you know, <laughs> Apple Repair Center, whoever's absolutely certified to repair your phone, because if someone else ends up damaging your phone, they're not going to be held liable for it, and then it's going to be like, oh, that's right. Oh, there you go. <laughs> I mean, just speaking from like personal experience, we have people who have gone and got their own screen repaired or an iPhone somewhere else, third party. Right. Um, and you can tell the difference. There's been times when like it's lifted, it doesn't sit right. There's um, two camera slots. Yeah, it just doesn't. <laughs> there, there is a difference. You do pay for you pay for quality in that sense. Like if someone's certified, like Spring is certified. Um, Apple obviously is certified. I even think Best Buy is certified. Um, so um, if you go through one of them, at least you know you're getting something that one knows what they're doing and they're putting the right parts in their phone. Um, I'm going to give you, okay? Okay. Right. This is very important now. This whole thing of spying. Yeah. And it's HUA, the Chinese one, WA. Oh, how would I know that? QA. QA. So all the Apple is going to be factored in China. Did we tell them about the operating system, or did they steal it? No, no, they just build the, what it is, is they just build the, no, no, they just build the parts for it. Right. Uh -huh. They assemble it. Those are cool parts, and then you have the software that's separate. Yeah, they assemble, but they assemble it in California, I believe, right? Yeah, yeah. I'm not, yeah. I don't know too much. I know. The only thing I know about that company in China is designed in the U.S. Yeah, yeah designed in the U.S. Built in China. China. Yeah, that makes sense. I'm pretty sure that's correct. And, yeah. But as far as the Huawei or whatever it is, yeah. I know that, from what I've researched, that is not allowed in the U.S. From my understanding, yeah. Yeah. Um, that's well. I think that the government's big on keeping it that way because it's China ran and all that. So um, <laughs> they don't want them to have any type of um, control over the network because it's also a network thing. It's not like that's like um, without getting into too much. Like five G is the new the new internet that's coming eventually <laughs> to us and all the other carriers. Um, uh, I know that they have their own cellular service that's in other countries, but from my understanding and from what I've read, that it's not coming to the U.S. It's not coming to the U.S. anytime soon because they don't want to. That gives them an, an opening into control if they really want. I was thinking of the question. I was going to say that's the same one. I think it's the Huawei. Yeah, I think it's the Apple. Yeah, I was wondering. Do it. Do it. Do it. Yeah. I was wondering if. Uh, 
the current phones you're talking about tonight, how do they compare to the Huawei phones? Um, personally, I have never used a Huawei phone. I haven't <laughs> really seen one in person, so I can't totally they, speak they to that. Fine? I don't know. I mean, look, technically, I don't want to get too much into this fine thing because that is a big can of worms to be completely honest with you. Um, I would like to think that Apple does the best to keep protect us, um, but you never know. It's kind of a it's kind of a, a double edged sword in that sense. Like, you, like we're becoming so much more necessary. Are you needing this new services that are available to us? Um, but. There's, you know, now it has my facial recognition. I put my, I use Apple Pay, so it has my card information on there. Um, Apple does things like with Apple Pay. I know they do things where they actually create a different number for your cards. So but if that was ever to be hacked, it's not your actual card number. It's a different card that they created to protect you. So there are things that they do to protect you. Um, I was listening to a podcast about like the the worry the worries of facial recognition and how they can be used against you for like advertising and stuff. Personally, I'll just give you my opinion on the whole advertising thing. Um, I think it's good and bad. I think it's nice to know that they're advertising things that are actually relevant to me, um, but they have information on me, so it's kind of the dual edged sort of matter. Uh, once when I was traveling, I was I was using an Android phone because I needed for GPS driving around. Yeah, totally. And uh, I went into a store and I it happened to be uh, a AT and T store. Mm -hmm. and, I, and I was asking about uh, different applications for particular uses. And he says I, I really can't recommend anything. Uh, Google is your friend. Well, I'm not entirely convinced that Google is my friend. But in your book, in your experience, is there are there any kind of third party? Review sources that you recommend in terms of talking about you know, spyware or various issues that may apply um, equally to both systems. That's a good question. I feel like um, I feel like I trust a little too much to be honest with you. As far as like with Apple again, I use Apple, um, but I do use a lot of Google apps on my phone. I use Google Search Engine. I use you know this this slide was made on Google software, um, but there's things out there like companies like CNET. You've ever seen it, they review stuff all the time. They, they used to load up my, my, my computer when I was using Windows with all kinds of crap. See that then? Yeah, yeah. They don't, don't, don't. Browser. I mean, go to their website to read, to read articles, don't download anything. I mean, you can download the app. Like, I haven't seen that app, that, but um, I turn off notifications. Like, I don't need them sending me notifications, but if I want to go over there, like, like the, the iPhone 11 just got announced, and I would like to hear what they think of it. So I'll go on there and pull up the iPhone 11 review and see what they say. You can do that with applications now, especially more popular applications. So like for traveling, say you were thinking about using, you know, comparison Google Maps to Apple Maps app to Waze app, right? Those are three really big apps. You can you can go on there. Android phones, you can just download it right off that website. 
Uh, Apple, you have to really could say, what would I need to actually develop like an Android app? As far as that, that's a little bit about my game. Yeah. Um, that's that's a lot of like coding, I don't, I don't like develop that. apps, I'm definitely no coder. Um, um, there's a lot of power in that and it's becoming very, very popular. I know that app industry is very competitive right now, um, more than it ever has been, because everybody's using apps for everything. Um, you know, now you don't even catch a cab anymore, you'll get an Uber, you're gonna lift, you know, and that's completely changed the game because it's an app for it. Um, so uh, there's probably definitely resources out there. Google it. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, but I'm sure there's a lot of stuff out there that they can teach you coding. Um, I just don't know what they're using and what the program is. I'm sorry. Well, Apple also, like, before you want to put an app on the Play Store or on the Apple Store, on the App Store, you have to, like, go through, like, a whole bunch of certification processes. So. Right, which is good and bad. Yeah. <laughs> so. What do you think the best gets when you? 5G phones will be out. So Sprint has three 5G phones available now. Um, Apple, again, just announced a newest phone this week. Uh, it was not 5G. They stated before the event that the next 5G phone from Apple will be till 2020, so next year. Um, which makes sense, because Apple, again, in my opinion, in my experience, takes the time to make sure everything's ready before they put it out. Um, 5G is just now becoming available in certain states, and um, we're starting, we now have it in New York, it's not fully set up here yet. Yes, yeah, it's like um, spotty in New York City. Yeah, to be completely right. honest, but um, uh, there's a Samsung phone, that's a Samsung S10 5G, 5G. Um, there's an LG phone, um, LG that's a 5G phone, and there's a new OnePlus, One Plus, which is a different brand. Um, yeah, I should have brought it. I was going to bring it, I didn't bring it. Um, wait. They, uh, the speeds have been, they are much faster. Um, my thing is, I mean, that's what they're saying. I haven't got a chance to really, really dive into it. And again, it's so early on. Um, me being an iPhone person, I'm finally waiting until 2020 because I know by then the network will be ready. And now I have a phone that can take full advantage of it. Um, we do sell 5G phones. We have a service for 5G phones. So you can start taking advantage of it now. Um, but it's still we, still we've had like little hot spots that have five years. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, I don't want to spend a thousand dollars for a, 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 you know, a, I mean, my a question, Apple phone now when 5 G's coming, right? Well, yeah. here's the thing. I mean, I mean, I sell stuff, but here's the thing. Like, you can swap the phone out in a year. So, like, me personally, like my personal self, I have a phone that's two years old now. I didn't get the 10 R when it came out. I had the 10 before. It wasn't a big difference. So I kept my 10. I paid off my 10. I'm paying off right now. Um, I might get the new one because of the camera. It's a huge increase on the camera. Um, I really want the 2021. Um, I know if I get the one now in a year, I can turn it in an upgrade. So that's kind of how phones are getting. I don't know if you guys have been to the phone shop lately, but um, the year, of, the time of doing contracts and getting a cheap deal on the phone is kind of gone, to be completely honest with you. Uh, because the phones have become much more expensive. We now sell phones that are $1,100, $1,200. Yeah, the 5G ones are, I think, what is it, 15 minutes? Yeah, that's kind of 5G, like 15, 16. Yeah, um, so uh, I wouldn't even, so point being is there's a lot of options for that. Um, 5G, I would look at what you're using it for. Do you need 5G now? Are you going to take full advantage of it? Because you do have to pay for the more expensive service for that. Uh, for us, it's a premium plan um, to be able to use 5G to its full capacity. Is that something that's worth it? Is my question. Like, if it's not going to be worth it to you, then wait. You know, keep using 4G. I stream and watch TV shows on 4G. That works just fine. Um, so How about a folding, a folding you know, screen? Uh, Samsung was working on it. Yeah, Samsung was working on it. Yeah, take this yeah, one. Yeah, 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 yeah. Samsung was. Uh, yeah. They're working on a few like folding folding mm -hmm. phones. I'd rather have a big screen than the 5G. Yeah, 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 yeah. sure. I mean, yeah, I mean, totally. Oh. Samsung right now, they are working on on the flip phone, and then you know, it flips open and it becomes like almost like a tablet. They're also working on another one where like you extend the size and it becomes like a bigger yeah. phone. Um, they worked on some really cool stuff to be honest. I think the main, they're having problems main, like the, from what I read, it was like the the hinges and oh, like yeah. that kind of stuff. So they're working on it. Um, 5G is coming no matter what though. 5G isn't just for phones. 5G, the main reason I think they're pushing for it is from everything from like self-driving cars 
to um, a bunch of other stuff. So like it would be it's fast not safe, but there's a health yeah. hazard. Honestly, they said the same thing. They said the same thing when 4G was coming out. And it's it's like, the problem well, with that is the technology is <laughs> so new. Even I mean, to, be, to be honest, it could be, and we won't know for years later. Um, but the problem is, is the world we live in is requiring data faster and more. Like a self-driving car needs extremely fast speed. And I know we might not need self-driving cars. I'm just using an example. I've never been in one. I don't think I have one. Maybe I'm going soon. Um, but those are things that they're, we're, the you know, country, government, whatever is trying to create, that they want to make sure we have a source of internet to provide that. Yeah. Um, yeah. Oh, 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 the understanding of how the lease works, at least with Sprint, I don't know about other carriers that you might have, um, it's basically a lease to own option. Um, the, the how it works specifically is we take the retail price of the phone, you still have the option to come in and buy the phone outright, but we take that full retail price and we initially divide it by 24 months, we put you on an 18 month lease, at the end of 18 months you have the option to buy the phone the last six months and own the phone. You just have to make sure to tell Sprint you want to own it. Um, the, it's, Personally, I think it's the best of both worlds because if I'm someone that wants a new phone every single year, I can lease it. I don't have to pay off the full phone before I upgrade. I can turn in my phone after 12 months. I've only paid off half of the phone, and now I need a new phone. So I can constantly just have the new phone if I'm comfortable with comfortable my phone to go. Well, so we take them, we either recycle them or we refurbish them, right? So we do a lot of refurbished devices. Um, if you ever do get spring complete and you destroy your phone or lost your stolen, we do replace it with a refurbished phone. The plus about that now is that people don't keep their phones for very long, so if you're getting a pretty barely used phone. But we do try to be, uh, from my understanding, energy efficient and like you know environmentally friendly. We like taking care of those who are recycling them or reusing them um, because people the demand is so high. I was working at Best Buy years ago when we were doing the two-year contracts. And every year someone wanted to come in and upgrade, and it's like, ah, oh, no, you're early. You still got to wait a whole other year before you can upgrade. <laughs> now you have the option to upgrade early, or if you're someone who likes to keep your phone, you can write it out, pay the 24 months, own your phone, your bill goes down, you can keep your phone for as long as you want, and then upgrade when you're ready. Or you can just, I mean, what a lot of people don't understand either is like, you can just put it on a credit card because you, play, you pay your credit card every month, too, right? So. Yes. <laughs> I was just going to say, yeah, but I know it's just, but that's good. At least it has no interest. <laughs> By the satellite. Do they have any cell sites at all? Physical cell sites. Physical cell sites. I don't know. I think so. I don't know. That's mm -hmm. not a question. Because I never saw one. I mean, we do have towers, obviously, right? So we mm -hmm. have like, and the towers are hidden very well. And like, this is all carriers. When I was working at Best Buy and went through training for mobile phones, they showed us different ways of how they hit towers. Like, I was living in Phoenix at the time, and they had towers that looked like cacti. You know, um, they make them look like trees. They make them look like the part of the building. Um, they don't want it to be an eyesore, so they're trying to make it blend in, which again is cool, but also kind of scary, I guess. But um, but yeah. So I don't know if it's all satellite, but we definitely have towers. Yeah, so they took over next Nextel years ago. Right. Everything was from satellite. So right. After that, I, I never I, saw. I never saw spring satellite. I, I promise there's physical towers everywhere. A lot everywhere. of the time, uh, like especially in the city, because you can't just put up a tower in the city, uh, you'll see like these little extensions on buildings, like these little white boxes, uh, tiny, tiny towers on buildings, and that's pretty much Those are towers. repeaters. Those the, are repeaters. Yeah, yeah. They no, they're not repeaters. They're actual like towers within themselves. Oh. Yeah. Yeah, but yeah, yeah. Of course. It's my date oh. in terms of a smartphone use. <laughs> The okay. smartphone that I got, I uh, I got one. Uh, I immediately bought a, uh, a micro SIM card, yep. so I could store a lot yep. of a lot of stuff, yep. oh, right. music, right. whatever. Yeah. Is, is that available uh, with iPhone as well? No. So that's a big. That's a, thank you for bringing it up because something we forgot and left out. So uh, iPhone, no expandable memory options. So you either buy a 64 storage. gigabyte. Which one? Yeah. When I say expandable memory, I'm thinking about the specific storage. storage space. There's always memory in the storage space. So there's like a computer. There's RAM. Wow. Right. There's, there's three things. So there's RAM. 
There's your storage, physical, like hardware, uh, um, hard drive, and then you have, now we have the cloud. But RAM, is, they call it memory, so it can be confusing, but RAM this stands for Random Access Memory, which is specifically, just like a computer, specifically for what you're operating now in the moment. So the more RAM you have, the faster the device can run, right? So you'll see computers with like 8 gigs of RAM, 12 gigs of RAM, whatever. And then you'll see them with like hundreds of gigs of hard drive. Hard drive is your storage space. So like phones, um, Phones you have, like with iPhones, it's like 64 gig is standard, and then you can get like 250 gigs or whatever. You cannot buy more physical memory for an iPhone. You can buy more uh, what they call iCloud, which is their digital storage, right? So they have a, they have a, a service um, factory building thing where they have just nothing but servers in them. And that's technically where it's stored, and you access it from the internet. So you have the ability to still continue to download stuff or take photos, but you need to buy more iCloud storage. With an Android, you can, yeah, with an Android, you can just expand the memory with a micro SD or yeah, micro SD card. Most all the phones still have an option for a memory card slot. So you can buy a, what they call a micro SD card, and you can stick that in and add more memory. I think only one of the Samsungs now, the new 10 Plus, does not have a memory card. But again, it's like depends on what you're using. It for, you know what I mean? A lot of the time, you don't you like 90, well, like 70 percent of people won't use like more than 100 gigs. So if you got something that's like rare, honestly, we rarely sell some SD cards anymore. Like I sold one today, but like I don't remember the last time I sold one. So it's very rare most people because now the phones are coming with 64 gigs of standard, which is more than enough for standard convert average consumers. And the, the new Samsung phones that come out, with, or they start out yeah, 128, 128 gigs. So that's a huh? so, I just want to mention as far as what you were saying about towers, the church down my street had a sprint tower in it, so. Yeah, you can go driving on a body. Yeah, if you if you start noticing them, you'll start being able to see what they are, but they definitely hide them. They don't want them to stand out. They want them to Yeah, you gotta kinda look for something. Yeah, you yeah. put the little antenna things and like weird shapes and stuff. Yeah, for sure. Has uh, Sprint got any policies that you care to tell us about uh, about a senior account or anything like that? Um, <laughs> funny, you should say so. Uh, Actually, uh, uh, I don't know if they're going to qualify as, and I apologize, I didn't know exactly who was going to be here. But uh, yeah, so our last slide is what Sprint <laughs> offers, so I apologize, I didn't know what I to sell. But just so you know, we have, it's not selling, you can come in if you want, but we definitely do a 55 and older plan. Um, 55 and older is still unlimited everything. Most all the plans we now sell are unlimited everything, unlimited data, unlimited texting, unlimited calling. Um, you have the option with that to do Sprint Global Roaming. Um, from my understanding and what I've experienced, Sprint does have one of the best international coverage maps. Yep. Um, you get unlimited texting automatically. They do charge for calling, um, but you can get unlimited data and you have other data options. And now you have things like WhatsApp. So when I'm in another country, I can use WhatsApp to make phone calls rather than actually using my cell phone to so avoid the calls. Um, how the pricing works down, you can go up to two lines on unlimited, uh, 55 and older, 55 plus. So uh, uh, first line is 55, second line is 25. If you set up auto pay, it's 50 and 20. Um, and then as far as additional options, you can add on a mobile hotspot. So a mobile hotspot is um, built into your phone. Back in the day, it was a separate device you had to carry along with you. That just did internet. Only internet, you can connect your laptop, your tablet, other devices to this and have internet with you wherever you go. The Sprint Drive I was talking about earlier for your car has a built-in hotspot so you can have internet in your car if you're driving around. Um, it's just not safe for the driver, but for the kids in the back or whoever it's great. Um, but the 10 gig mobile hotspot add-on for $10 means you can turn your phone into a hotspot. Um, so if I have a laptop or a tablet and I'm somewhere where I don't want to use an unsecure Starbucks Wi-Fi or an unsecure McDonald's Wi-Fi, I have my own secure internet that's coming directly from my phone, which is coming directly from Sprint that I can share. So that's an add-on for that plan. Um, we do have other plans besides that that come with or without that. Um, but yeah, so 55 plus, unlimited everything. If you set up auto pay, it's $70. How your, I'm sorry, go to the sprint stuff, but just so we're all under the same boat. Um, how your bill breaks down is your plan, what you're paying for your phone, if you're leasing it or if you buy it, whatever the situation was that. And the third thing that is on your phone, on your plan, is sprint complete, um, which is our basically our insurance, but it's one new insurance now. 
Um, it covers everything from like next day replacements if it's lost, stolen, or completely destroyed. Um, you get another phone within 24 hours. You do pay the deductible. You do get one of those refurbished phones we talked about. But you, if you're in the middle of a lease, instead of having to pay off the lease to pay off the phone, you do another phone to replace it. Sorry? Yeah, do you have any plan where you can call from the United States to any country in the world? So not any country. We do have uh, add-ons that uh, it's called Sprint. Um, International. No, it's called, it's called Talk and, uh, Call and Text or something. I forget the actual name. It's like $15 more, and you get unlimited calling to like 60 different countries. 30, I think 30 of them are landline only, so if you know the person and they have a home phone. Yeah. Oh, okay, okay, for example, I have a roommate from Central Africa. Right. And he cannot find a decent plan anywhere because, first of all, people in his country don't have landlines. They all use mobile phones. <laughs> and that's Secondly, a, that the, the rates they charge are ridiculous, yes. like half a dollar, a dollar a minute. Yeah, I mean, we do, ours is 20, 25 cents a minute, which still adds up very quickly. Um, in situations where it's a country that's not listed as one of the 60 and there's no option, if they have internet, you do WhatsApp. You do applications that don't require phone. WhatsApp is a free app. Yeah. And, that, and that's on both Android and iPhone. Yeah, yeah but then the, the other end has to have internet access. They have to have internet access, yes. So that's the only, I mean, we can only control on one end, on one end, obviously. They do need to have some type of internet on the other end. Um, from my understanding, that's becoming more and more available, but obviously this place is what's not. Can you explain about locked and unlocked phones? Yes, that's a great question. Um, so, um, so, um, so uh, basically, we use the price, but we all that, so I get to talk to a bunch of people about it. Um, uh, so, you get your phone from Sprint, right? You're leasing it. Um, while you're leasing it, you technically do not own it, correct? Like a car. Um, until you own it, you cannot be unlocked by Sprint. We have the option to unlock it once you own it. So if you buy it outright, there is a rule you still have to wait 60 days to unlock it, but you can unlock it. After you write out the lease and you pay it off, you can unlock it. Once you unlock it, it's easier to work with other countries and other carriers. There is still a caveat to that. Um, but this is more with older phones. Um, there are two main types of wireless networks in the country. Without being too techy, one of them is called CDMA, one of them is called GSM. Um, uh, Sprint uses CDMA, and so does Verizon. Verizon also uses GSM, AT&T and T-Mobile use GSM. Um, so if I have an older phone, I bought it, my carrier unlocks it, but it's GSM, and you come yeah. to put it on Sprint through CDMA, it won't work. It doesn't matter if it's unlocked, because it's the hardware physically that's built into the phone is not compatible with our network. Newer phones, like I think since the iPhone 10, uh, maybe the 8, um, are set to work, work set to work both. So it doesn't matter where you get it, you can still switch it, but you still have to get it unlocked by your carrier. As long as it was purchased in the US. Yes, and when it was purchased internationally, it just never works. As of yet, yeah. things might change later, but as of right now, no. So um, it just depends. But to get it unlocked, you have to first own it, and then you have to still be aware of it's a CDMA network or a GSM network. Is CDMA going away? Um, I don't know. The big thing that they're, they're all re um, so it's Sprint's, all away. Sprint's yeah, yeah. probably because GSM is more. I think Sprint's the only one that has CDMA only. Everybody else is at least GSM. Like Verizon does both. AT and T and T Mobile just do C uh, GSM. Uh, GSM is more global. That's what the G stands for. Um, the whole point, if you haven't heard already, uh, it's... And I'm going to make a comment. Yeah, of course. Right now, announced at the end of the year the drop in CDMA sales. Cool. Totally. And I, yeah. I don't, that doesn't surprise me. Um, I do have a question for yeah. you. First. With the impending uh, merger with uh, T-Mobile, yeah. how will features and pricing change with Sprint? So, I'm being recorded, so I can't, I don't want to speak for Sprint. I don't want to speak for Sprint. Um, I would just tell you the things that have been communicated to me that I'm allowed to talk about, and I, that I know, and everything else, I don't know. So, um, from my understanding, for the merger to happen, they had to make an agreement that they were not going to change their price plan for the next three years. Um, that was part of the contract they made with the government. Um, don't quote me on that, camera. 
Uh, so, um, but that was my understanding. Um, I have people that are currently with T-Mobile that will come to me and talk about switching, and I recommend two because um, even though you're currently T-Mobile, there's a lot of plans, and this is with all the carriers. When you switch, you get a lot of plans as a new customer. You get better deals on the plan, you get better deals on the phones as a new customer. That will still carry over. You'll be grandfathered in. So when this merger actually does fully happen, you will still keep those price plans. To my understanding, um, uh, I know there's scare that the prices might go up because it is um, almost a monopoly, right? There's only three main carriers at that point, but I know that part of their deal is to keep that from happening. Um, how long that's going to last, I don't know. But that's about as much as Honestly, time. like, another part of the deal was they are going to create a fourth carrier. You know, just just talking with Sprint about buying. Uh, what was it like? Virgin, oh, yeah, third party. Yeah, so third party. Part of the mergers we can know we can't take the Sprint currently has Virgin, Mobile, Boost as a prepaid carriers that are underneath the Sprint umbrella. Um, those are not part of the deal. So those are still going to be somewhere. Those will be prepaid options. Um, there's just going to be three main carriers. The plus with that for Sprint customers and T-Mobile customers is you'll have both networks. And the main reason for the push is specifically to get 5G up and running faster. Mm -hmm. Using T-Mobile's money and Sprint's hardware or whatever they have. That's a good question. Kind of, kind of hard to answer. The I haven't got to play with the uh, newest iPhone yet, so I haven't seen it in, in live. I just saw. I mean, they they still they still twelve megapixels. Right. Megapixels not everything. Um, People think that you need like a thousand megapixels to make it a better camera, and that's not always the case. Um, the that's the biggest thing they worked on going from the current models to the new models was the camera. The phones physically look very similar. They're about the same size. They're, they're fast. Well, they are. So the uh, you know the so there's three new phones that got announced, and then you talk about the Samsung. Um, so the new Samsung phones that came out, and now there's a new iPhone that just got announced. The, the two, the three main iPhone options is the iPhone 11, which is replacing the 10R that we had up there earlier, and then the iPhone 11 Pro and the iPhone 11 Pro Max. So that's a mouthful, but um, the Pro and the Pro Max have three cameras on the back of them now, um, which is a step up from the 10 to 10S, which has two. Um, the plus with that is they have an ultra wide shot. So if in a scenario with a wide angle, right? So you can switch really quickly from the app, um, from the camera app. Like if I want to take a picture of you in really close quarters, I can switch to the wide shot that fits it better. Or if I'm taking like a landscape shot, I can do that. Um, and then I think the third one is part of the telephoto. So like for close up shots, you have that also. Um, the photos look amazing. The video quality looks amazing from their presentation. I mean, they're not going to put a, I mean, it's, it's Apple, they're great at presenting. So um, how good that is in person is going to determine if I'm going to upgrade to it. Because otherwise, why not keep my phone? Because that's the biggest difference between my phone and that. Um, Samsung just came out with a Note and the, the Note 10, Note 10 Plus. And then in March, they came out with the Galaxy S10 and the S10 Plus. Um, and honestly, the cameras on them are like really amazing. The S10 5G actually has like four cameras in the back and three cameras in the front. So you know, if you like taking a lot of pictures from like Instagram and stuff, I don't know. <laughs> 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 um, I I don't know. I think the iPhone. Yeah, I think the iPhone. Because I think they, they specifically yeah. talked about like more of a telephone. Yeah, that was their main push. Yeah, yeah. I don't. I just play with the first. The big thing that they fixed, which was always a big differentiator, was the low light set, low light photos. So Samsung's always like led them in low light photos. Like they usually had up until this up until this newest one, Samsung took yeah, basically lets in more light, it captures more. The demo they showed made a huge difference from the photo that wasn't using low light settings and the one that was using low light settings. It's just like night and day. Unintended, I guess, on that. Um, but yeah, so that so We'll see. I think I really think that the phones are going to be the cameras going to be amazing on the new iPhones. Uh, that because if they're going to spend the whole year really focus on that mostly, I think that it's got to be great. I mean, the yeah. only other differences is processor and the screen resolution and the battery, which is you know every year they fix those. Every year it gets faster. Every year it gets a better screen. Every year it gets a better battery. Yeah. But this year they made a big jump on the camera. So we'll see. Um, I, I think it's going to be. Yes, sir.
Uh, one uh, disadvantage of Apple products that you didn't mention is they all tend to be white and hard to keep clean. <laughs> I mean, they come in different colors. The 10R, let me go back. The 10R comes in, you can't really see it because I would have to turn the lights off. But it comes in like six different colors. And they're bright, uh, like bright yellow, bright red, blue, <laughs> um, coral, which is a huge favorite. It's like an orangey pink. Um, so they do, they are listening to the consumers that want that. I think the high-end the high models are pretty standard. Silver, which is the white, space gray, which is the black, and then the gold. Uh, they didn't announce like a new like titanium, like, like army green color. Mm -hmm. But I mean, to be honest, we all have cases. Yeah, if, you all all, cases. Uh, if you look at all their accessories, cables, and everything, yeah. they're almost all I mean, white. It's a brand thing for sure. <laughs> like if uh, if I go to a friend's house, I know it's an iPhone cable or not an iPhone cable. <laughs> kind of going back to talking about using third-party products, I would prefer to use an iPhone charger rather than like a different brand charger. Uh, it's better for my battery. So they're they're very good at what they do and they want you know they, they want you to think that you have this whole ecosystem i have i have, I have an apple tv i have everything it's all the same and they all look the same they all operate the same they all work together um so they have a brand they're trying to protect on that i guess so yeah, i don't think they're going to even the airpods their own like the headphones they're only white they don't come out in black or any other color yet i mean they could change but as of right now they're only white but if you see them you know they're like they're apple headphones you know what i mean uh, if people steal the phones, what do they do with these phones? So, a lot of the time, if they steal an Apple phone, I mean, you have a passcode on it, so they can't access any of your information. There's no way to remotely hack, you know, your passcode away. Uh, you they, could, they can't wipe it. Yeah, you could just wipe it, or you could remotely wipe it yourself. And what mostly happens, though, because they don't use them. They take them for parts. Flip them, or they use them for parts, or they flip them and sell them. Because to someone who isn't aware, like, if you're oh, not aware, yeah. right? If you're not aware, like, oh, I'm buying a used iPhone, and then you buy it from them, and then you come to Sprint, and you try to activate it, and then it's, it's flagged as lost or stolen, or it's not compatible, or whatever the case, they they still made their money, you know what I mean? So that's most of the times what they steal for. Like we have demo phones that get stolen all the time. Yeah, um, that, those are and those are demos. Videos. They're demos. You can't even totally use them, but I'm sure they go out and sell them like they're. Like, oh look, the iPhone Ten R for only two hundred dollars. Right. Yeah. So that's that's <laughs> most likely what they're using. I don't know for sure, but that's what I assume. Uh, and just an interesting thing, my Samsung S5, the one first one I got, I like the fact that it was uh, watertight to one meter. Yeah. So if, if it goes in the tub yeah. toilet or the yeah. sink, yeah. it's still recoverable. <laughs> I mean, any, any, you, they're, any these parts. They're continuing with that, that. yeah. Like the, S, S, yeah the S10, you can submerge it in up to five feet of water for 10 minutes, and it'll be just fine. Um, the, the 11s they announced, the brand new ones they just announced, up to two meters, up to 30 minutes. I would not test it. To yeah, be yeah, yeah. honest with you. Yeah. I mean, we still sell life -proof, <laughs> like waterproof cases for a reason. Um, <laughs> but it's a little bit of peace of mind if I drop my phone into a puddle. You know what I mean? I mean, I carry this as an extra camera. Right. It's totally. It's, it's raining or something. Right. Yeah. And 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 for stuff like that, like, if, if you get a chance, go on the Apple website. You can like watch the videos of all the new phones, and they even have the word like. The soda spills onto it, or you know, the water from like a sink hits it, or especially like stuff on top because there's not a lot of holes anymore. It's just the speaker, and then you have the ports at the bottom. You know, that's really it. Um, but, but you know, on the older model with the eight, it was I mean, not even the eight because the eight's a fake button. It's not even a real button. Yeah. Um, like the six was a physical button that had a, 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 a you know a seal around it so you could get water in there, but they got rid of that. So they're doing everything to make it more. Um, again, I would not go swimming with it, but people do, and you know, water damage still happens sometimes. But what kind of connector does the 11 have? It's still it's lightning. Still lightning. Still still lightning. lightning. I don't think they're going to change the USB-C until next year. I think next year, if my, uh, if my intuition is correct, I think next year is going to be a big upgrade for them. So who is using the USB-C? Samsung. Well, a lot, a lot of Android phones use USB-C, either USB-C or micro USB. Now, yeah. another day is that you need like. A thousand different yeah, okay. charges for different phones. Yeah, I think like, it, this one's mostly free. I think like 2008 they made the law that you had to, to consolidate. Because when I was working at Best Buy originally, when smartphones were just starting, LG that had like so three stressful. different chargers, Samsung had like three different chargers, so Motorola had three different chargers. So like, there was no such thing as a universal charger um, that's been consolidated. All Android phones now use USB-C because it's faster. 
than an old micro USB, um, and the difference with USB C is I can plug it in either direction. It's the same shape all the way around. A micro USB you can plug in one way, so people are breaking them. Uh, the Lightning cable on the Samsung on the iPhone is the same. You can plug it in either direction. Um, Apple is slowly working their way towards the USB C. The iPad Pro uses a USB C port. The main reason for that is they wanted the iPad Pro to basically be a laptop replacement, and to do that, you need to be able to plug up external devices, hard drive, keyboard, whatever. So having USB C is more well, universal to the devices that are out there already. So um, that's the only Apple product besides computers that I know of that has. A USB C as of right now, um, that might change next year. I know it's different charging speeds, you know, different quality. Fast, wow. fast charge, that kind yeah. of thing. You want to look at like ampage and wattage and stuff. Like we have different chargers. Now the big thing with all the phones is wireless charging. So um, we sell little wireless little plates, kind of looking things. You sit on the end table, or your desk, or whatever. You just set your phone on top of it. That's the only fully universal charger that would work with the Samsung and it would work with my iPhone. And the good thing about that, um, if you wirelessly charge your phone, you won't have to worry about your battery losing like oh, power. It's not overcharging. Yeah, it's over yeah, right. 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 But now we have we sell batteries that are also wireless chargers. So you have a battery, you can set your phone on it and charge wirelessly without the cable. So but yeah, but I even have a battery case. Oh, a wild question. Uh, what if you sit one of these phones, uh, wireless charging phones, on an induction cooker? Any relationship there? I don't know. <laughs> I don't think so. I don't know. That's a great question. I don't think. I don't think because I think it's all. There's a specific. I don't. Don't quote me. I think there's a specific technology they use for wireless charging. So it only works with the device that has the wireless charging with it. Or could have opened up a dimensional range. <laughs> 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 Uh, oh, no, no. Yeah. You pay for what you get, honestly. Um, I would never use one on my iPhone. Um, it's hard though because the Apple cable is $30. I mean, it's like saying, oh, I'm sorry, I, I like car, I like car analogies. I don't know what you're talking about. It's like saying your car requires premium fuel, but you're fueling it every day with the cheapest regular you can find and then you go to the dealership like oh my god my engine's making making these weird noises like, okay what gas are you using uh regular it says premium on your uh instruction manual there so <laughs> yeah i can call that yeah okay. i'm sorry so yeah so i mean you can if you realize your battery's dying sooner than it was before, that's probably why. I mean, well. Apple even does the thing when you plug up a device that's not Apple brand, that we don't even say that the, the accessory you've attached is not compatible or something. So charge it, but it's not efficient. Cool. Any other questions? Cool. Um, so, yeah. Oh, I'm sorry. I think we got Not trying to sell, but we will definitely leave our business cards up here if anybody has questions. Cool. I brought some cool yellow, bright yellow sunglasses that anybody wants them. <laughs> I know summer's kind of over, but we got it still. Um, and then also savings guides, which we'll talk about a lot of the phones that we already talked about, plus other phones and other devices that Sprint sells. Um, please feel free to come in and talk to us. If anybody is interested now, we are, I do have, we, are, we do do inter, um, appointments, um, and if anybody wants to schedule an appointment, we do have a five dollar gift card for Sprint. But no pressure. If you want to come in and like talk to us in person, and I still have that five dollar gift card available when you come in, I'll give it to you on um, all of the album. But what about your address on the blackboard? Was that? What about your address? Oh yeah, I'll write the Sprint address. Yeah, it's in the uh, it, yeah, the cool thing is that's pretty iconic. It's in the flat iron. Yeah, 20, between 30, 23rd, on 23rd between 5th and um, Broadway, right where they kind of connect. It's right there. Mm -hmm. So you have interest on both shores. On street level? Yes, bottom yeah. level. It's on the corner. Like this, it's oh, a really shaped yeah. building. Yeah. 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 Cool. Yeah. 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 I have a question for you. Yeah, of course. <laughs> Does your Sprint store accept cash? Of course. Because of the T-Mobile store, they don't accept cash. And it's an unsolicited testimony, but uh, I go there and it's very, very helpful. <laughs> Um, yeah, we probably take cash. No, it's not serious. Question. That's crazy. No, I'm no, crazy. Like so that's crazy. Um, I don't understand why. I mean, I know we're trying to get more digital. I can tell you that with Sprint, we now do a lot of our services. I guess they have no robberies. I mean, 
And maybe, who knows? Yeah. There's a T Mobile store right across from us. I've never heard anything about that. But um, we do we have payment machines that can come in and make a payment on your account with them, which wouldn't be able to talk to anybody who's coming and put the cash in the machine. Um, Those guys are really mean, though. The, guy, the T Mobile guys across the street. You don't have to go over them. I haven't talked to them. I haven't seen them. Not. I do have a technical question. With the new 11, is yeah. there an FM option on the iPhone? FM. FM. Radio? Radio. 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 There's definitely apps for it, though. I mean, I know you have, I, I, the, from my understanding, the best app to use if you're trying to get specific radio stations is... No, 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 no. Not, not the specific radio station. Just to be able to have an FM radio. Hard to think so. I don't know. Don't quote me. I didn't well, think is there something we have to wait for Apple to develop? That or a device that's an accessory that you buy and touch plugs up to your phone. I don't know. They're good about doing that. They're good about making you spend your money. Um, I mean, you have to buy this adapter just to plug it up to the TV. Um, so I don't know, to be honest. I don't know. Uh, but if there is a specific radio station you're looking for, iHeartRadio is a really good app that you can like, look for specific radio stations. And that uses your internet. So your cellular is sort of unlimited internet. You don't have to worry about that. FM radio, you don't need the internet. I get it. I know. I totally get it. I'm just yeah. saying, if we don't have it, there's kind of an alternative. Kind of. Yeah. Not fully, but there's options. So, perfect. Any other questions? Cool. Thank you guys so much for having us. Yeah.